Thank you, Honorable Chief Justice, for joining us in this conversation. Um, we're having this conversation as part of an international conference on shaping and interpreting con transformative constitutions. And what is, in your view, one of the major challenges that we're facing as a country at this particular moment of constitutional implementation? Uh, the, the main challenge is, uh, is basically the resistance to the implementation of the constitution. That's, 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 that's key, it's very core, um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. We all expected that uh, the forces against the, the new constitution will regroup and uh, they will try and tear it down. Um, so it's a positive ch challenge in the sense that those of us who believe in the constitution and its vision uh, for this nation will now have to stand up and fight you know, for the Constitution. What do you perceive is the role of the judiciary um, stemming from the provisions of the Constitution in the implementation process? Well, the, we are the custodian and protectors of the supremacy of the Constitution. And, but having said that, it all depends on, if, on uh, the disputes that come to us. Uh, people might decide to resolve there are disputes outside the constitution. <clears throat> but <clears throat> in cases where uh, our device has been sought, you know, like the dispute between Senate and National Assembly over the uh, revenue distribution bill, um, we were able to, you know, to give technical uh, advice, which is also policy and also is also political. Uh, because the constitution itself is very, very, very political. So I think that is the, the protection that is envisaged. Uh, and that's something that we have to constantly pronounce ourselves in our, our decisions. Because we speak to people through the, the, you know, the decisions we write. Um, and, and, and so there is that level also of uh, using every opportunity uh, to tell the Kenyan people what the constitution uh, provides and what is expected of them. And we've done that in issues of elections, issues of advisory opinions. And uh, I hope there will be more uh, applications for advisory opinions because that's where I see the Supreme Court playing that role uh, significantly. Um, you've alluded to it in, in, in some of your sentiments. There's mm. been, because of the nature of the decisions that are before you, mm. um, there's been quite a bit of political backlash, So, you, if, mm. if you might call yes. it that. Mm. Um, and tensions between the three arms of government, mm. uh, between the judiciary, the legislature, and um, the executive. And mm. we've seen a lot of instances mm. where mm. the court decisions are not respected mm. by the other institutions of mm. government. Mm. What is your take on that? And what should we be doing as civil society, as Kenyan citizens? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> disobeying a court order is overthrowing the constitution. It's overthrowing the rule of law. And the consequences are that uh, uh, you, you, the country becomes anarchical. Um, so the consequences of disobeying court orders are not just personal. Uh, they are very, very, very serious. Uh, so my position always is uh, that court orders have to be obeyed. I've, I've said as much saying if they are not obeyed, these are the consequences, and so that people, people understand that. Uh, but it's, it's the people who breathe life to the Constitution and who will strengthen the judiciary so that our orders are not uh, disobeyed. Um, but under the Constitution, we are also accountable for the decisions we make. So we will also have to tell Kenyan people why we decided in a particular way. Not in the old way where you write a decision, you deliver it, and you disappear. Uh, under the Constitution, people might ask you, why did you do this, and, and so forth. So uh, the judiciary itself also has to move from the old uh, culture of aloofness, uh, uh, arrogance, and um, um, status. And basically, realize that you, we've got to explain our decisions to the people so that uh, 
you know, they have, you know, we have their confidence. And that's the role I see the society playing. Okay, yes, support the, uh, the orders that judges come up with, but also, you know, hold judges accountable, you know, as well. Um, because we make mistakes. And uh, when we make mistakes, people appeal, which is okay. But still, we need to be told, you know, you've made mistakes. And, and um, for me, I think uh, any critique, uh, you know, to um, uh, a critique uh, towards uh, judgments and judges, it's okay, you know. Sometimes I even say that abuse is fine. It's part of the transition. We will soon get a balance. Uh, because when people abuse you over decisions, uh, I suspect it's because they are angry uh, and that's how they react. Uh, so at that point, to basically tell them, be civilized and be nice might not be, <laughs> you know, the best mm. thing is uh, uh, to hear what they are saying. Mm. Do you think there's room for that? Do you think there's room for dialogue? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. There's even a great room for dialogue between the three arms. And it goes, it's, 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 it's going on. It's just that the papers don't want to publicize it. Mm. But there is a lot of dialogue that goes on, which is good. And that's what the Constitution expects. Dialogue, interdependence, consultation, um, and and uh, it's just that Kenyans are taking too long to make the necessary mental shifts that reflects, uh, you know, the new dispensation. Um, Chief Justice, mm. there's one more issue on um, access to justice. Yeah. Obviously being one of the key issues um, under the constitution insofar as um, being able to get the rewards mm. that we envisioned. Mm. Um, what are some of the measures that the judiciary is taking mm. under the judiciary transformation mm. framework and mm. other measures mm. um, in order to enhance access to justice um, mm. and the ability of Kenyans to articulate their rights and, and to access these, mm -hmm. these rights? Um, well, we, 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 we're doing two things. Um, only 5% of Kenyans go to court. Uh, the 95 percent don't don't go to court. They go to forums where they uh, are convinced that they will get justice. So we are uh, 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 trying as much as possible to bring that that 95 percent under the constitution, and that's why there's all this talk about trans, you know alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, traditional justice systems. Uh, because people use them and we want to make sure that they don't violate the constitution when elders sit, you know, to hear divorce matters because the, they, they, they might violate women's rights, children's rights uh, under uh, the guise of, you know, traditional justice system. So there's that bit of integration that we are doing, you know, some serious pilot uh, schemes that we have to see how the traditional justice systems uh, can be part of, of the, uh, the justice system of this country. Okay? And that's, that's very, 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 very important. Uh, because when people talk uh, about access to justice, they tend to forget that critical point. Now, as to the 5%, we want to make sure that uh, courts are built. Um, Cases are hard expeditiously uh, and efficiently, and uh, uh, that people who are in prison are not just kept there for many years waiting, you know, for their cases to be heard. So it's, it's, it's a double pronged approach, uh, and it's a very, very, very serious issue um, uh, because, uh, like in the area of criminal justice, really. Uh, uh, that's not justice. The justice, the criminal justice is criminal in our courts. Yeah.